Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Stove Top Yum Yum. Today we're going to make chicken fricassee. Now you're probably wondering, chicken fricassee, it's a Cuban dish that is uh, consists of chicken, potatoes, and follow me and I will show you the spices. Alright, here's the spices. We're going to need salt, black pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, and cumin. And throw a bay leaf in there. And I'll show you how as soon as we get cooking. So let's get the fresh ingredients. Hey YouTube, I'm back. Today we are not only making fricassee de pollo, which is chicken fricassee, which is chicken potatoes in my special sauce with my special, oh you'll love it over white rice, it's so delicious. But I have a treat for you today. I have a helper today. I'd like to introduce you to my 11 year old son, Carlos. Carlito! Hey! Hey, this is my 11 year old helper right here. He's a great helper and remember, being in the kitchen with your kids is wonderful. They're, they keep it, it's interacting and it's quality time. But anyway, it's great. So let's get cooking. Okay, CJ, the first thing we're gonna do is we're working with raw chicken, you guys, which is, in this case, today we're working with raw chicken breast. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to wash our hands. We're gonna keep a score to that. Make sure we carefully, well, don't do it over my chicken, I'll probably do it over here. We're washing our hands. Very important to wash our hands. Perfect. Now we're going to grab a rag and we are going to dry our hands. Okay, uh, CJ, so let me show everyone out there. Uh, I previously showed you all the spices that we're going to use. We're going to use uh, boneless chicken breasts and skinless as well. Now, it's very important. This is something very important. I love to use baby new potatoes. Now, the baby new potatoes, keep in mind, the baby new potatoes have less starch and less fat. So I like to use it because it's kind of like a healthier take on it. I don't know if you knew that or not, but they're sweet. Normally, in Cuban cuisine, when making fricasse de pollo, the red potato is very popular. Why? Because the red potato is sturdier and it holds, it, it holds up in your dish. It won't become mush like the russet Idaho. This is a russet baby, but the baby ones are sturdier than the russet Idaho. And that's just a tip. But I wanted to let you know, you can use red if you'd like. I prefer to, your, to use the baby because the baby looks prettier on the plate. Okay guys, our hands are squeaky clean. Let me see, are your hands clean? Let yes. me see. All right, his hands are clean. So now I want to tell you a little secret. Fricasse de pollo, which consists of, I use boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which a lot of us use nowadays, you buy the big bags, right? When we go shopping, get the big bags. And I like to use that, and normally in the fricasse de pollo, which is a Cuban dish, red potato is used very often. You're probably wondering why, not a russet or an Idaho. Well, the red potato is sturdier. It holds its, its shape better in the pan, because we are cooking with high heat. But I prefer to use baby potatoes. I love the russet baby potatoes. Keep in mind, it's a good tip to know, the, the smaller ones, the russets get mushy quick, but the baby ones will hold its shape because I will put the whole po baby potato in the dish and that way it'll look prettier. There's almost no fat to the baby potato. I'm not sure if you knew that. And there's a lot less starch. So I'm going to do that. And here we have my onion in a Ziploc bag, which by now is half of an onion, of a yellow onion which you all know I keep it in the Ziploc bag, so the onion smell stays where it belongs. Where? In the Ziploc bag. In the Ziploc. So now we are ready to start chopping our chicken. CJ, bring me the cutting boards. Thank you very much. All right, so here we have a plastic cutting board and a wooden cutting board. This is another great tip. Always remember that wood, the least has a lot of pores, the wood. So any raw chicken that you're cutting on a wood board is going to absorb in the board because of the pores. 
If you need to insist on using a wooden board, make sure it's bamboo. Bamboo is the least absorbent of pores. So that is why this board is put aside and for raw chicken, we always use a plastic cutting board. I would advise if you don't have one, you can pick one up nowadays at a dollar store, right? Yeah. Where you sh yeah, Walmart, where you wherever you shop for your groceries, public, everybody has them. So pick it up. Either it, uh, it can be a smaller one, or it can be that I have to happen to have this big one. But plastic is the best thing to cut raw chicken on because it has very, very minimal or no pores. All right. So we are going to grab. You're going to hand me a piece of chicken. Carefully hand me a piece of chicken. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to dice this chicken. I'm gonna have CJ bring the camera over here so you can see how I'm dicing this chicken. Bring it over here, CJ. Can you all see me there? Okay. All right, I'm going to slice it across. Two, three, four. Then I'm gonna take my chicken. Please remember to keep your fingers away from the knife. Hold on to your chicken firmly and roll your fingers back. And we're going to dice it uh, about a quarter of an inch. So now we are going to the stove. So we have the, you're wondering why I don't have gar fresh garlic here, and the reason is because fresh garlic, as a good tip as well, will burn easily. So we want to saute this really well, and then we'll add our fresh garlic. So I'm going to turn my stove, and you can hear the sizzle. You hear that sizzle? Oh my god. I love this stuff. Look at me. Come back here, buddy. These onions like to jump off the cutting board and try to escape. So we're gonna stir this. So while he stirs that, I'm gonna grab a globe or Here's a bird's eye view of CJ stirring the vegetables. So when the onions start to sweat a little bit, what we're gonna do is we are going to drop a tablespoon of tomato paste, which in this case, I'm using the measuring spoon. I'm back, guys. So my fresh garlic is in the pot. The paprika, the tomato paste, all that has, ate, makes, has made my dish. It looks like a reddish brown, so delicious. So always remember that we are going to put our chicken in last. And why are we gonna do that, CJ? Because chicken breast, he doesn't know this, but I'm gonna let you guys know. Please don't forget, chicken breast cooks fast, especially if it's boneless and skinless. And you do not want your chicken to dry out. I repeat, you do not. So we are gonna get our potatoes, and I just finished washing. We're gonna get our potatoes. Look at some potatoes. And I'm gonna drop them in whole. We're gonna drop them in whole because they're baby potatoes. All right, so here we go. Can you grab, can you, can you grab me a handful, please? Bring them. All right, so we're dropping our potatoes in there. Keep our, thank you, CJ. Ooh, my floor is getting wet. Uh-oh. So CJ's helping me drop them in, so our potatoes are in. So now what we're gonna do is, oh my goodness. Oh my God, it smells so good in here. I think, I think this is gonna wake my husband up from his nap. It smells so good already in here. All right, guys, so now I'm going to grab a cup of water. I'm not sure if I'm going to need more, but I'm going to grab a cup of water. So we're gonna grab a cup of water. Now with the cup of water for the room, it's not only it will help our potatoes, it will help our potatoes boil, uh, cook with that method, with boiling water, it's only a cup of water, but at the same time, it will help establish a thick sauce. So let's put a little more in there. You can throw that in the garbage, Carlito. Okay, so look, Carlito, check this out. You see that, guys? Put that in the sink for me, my dear. What a great helper I have. Okay, guys, so this, this is what it is going to look like in your pan. You see that? Delicious. You can see the paprika colors. You can see the color. Hey guys, hey. we're back for a second. I wanted to show you a very important tip. So it's probably been like 10 minutes now. Don't forget that the baby potatoes go by quick. 
So what I want you to do is, when 10, or 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes go by, I want you to take a fork and I want you to find the biggest potato in the pot. They're baby, but they're not all the same size. So in this case, this is the biggest. So if your fork goes through like this, your potato's five minutes away from being done. So what does that mean? It's time to put our chicken in, because that's about as long as the chicken's gonna take to cook. So I'm gonna have CJ pour the chicken in. Let's make sure that we rinse this off. It was pre-frozen, so there's still a little bit of water and it's defrosted. He's gonna pour the chicken right in. Make sure you aim right. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yeah. Can we put that in the sink? And we're gonna go real quick and wash our hands and come right back. Okay guys, so my hands are clean. While CJ's finishing washing his hands, I'm going to stir the chicken breast in the pot. So we're gonna stir it. Wish I had a smell-o-vision button. I say it in every video. This is so delicious and I have not put the extractor on because of the noise for the video. So that means the smell's going throughout the house and my husband's about, probably gonna wake up, he's taking a nap, he's off today, so. So we're gonna do that. So now, another secret is, CJ, I want you to grab, uh, where, here's the measuring cups. I'm gonna grab, this is gonna be crazy, I'm gonna grab, where's, oh, my cup. Grab me a cup of water, please, bring me a cup of water. Since this is looking a little bit, uh, if you'll notice, it's starting to like, uh, water evaporates and we still have some sauce. But I'm gonna put another cup of water in here. Let's do half a cup, I'm sorry guys, half a cup. So we have a total of one and a half cups. So this one, CJ, is the half cup. Here, let me have, fill that with water for you. So I'm gonna have CJ pour half a cup of water in here. Very carefully, please. Don't bathe me in it, please, whatever you do. Please don't. No, please don't. Pour it in here. Okay, all of it, please. Let's pour it. Okay, awesome, thank you. So now, you see how it's starting to look a little bit like a little saucier, okay? A little bit saucier. So now I'm gonna cover it. I'm going to. Okay, guys, I'm back for a second. Our food is ready. The chicken and the potatoes are ready. The fricasse de pollo is ready. The stove is turned off. And one little tip, if you're making dinner for your husband or you're making dinner for your wife, there's a very specific thing that chefs are known for and that's they don't serve any food without tasting it first. And that's what I do. So I'm gonna grab a tablespoon and I'm gonna dig into the sauce right here. Very carefully, don't burn yourself. We're gonna try it and see if it has enough salt, if it has, uh, if everything is okay, if it doesn't need anything. Because the last thing you want to do is serve a plate of food to your family member, whether it's your husband or your wife, and it be needing some salt. So let's try it. So I'll blow on it. Oh my God. Oh, I just want to do the cha-cha. Carly, CJ, I'm doing the cha-cha. Sauce is so good. Oh my gosh, I wish I, could help. I wish I could give you something so you can taste it. Look at the beauty, look at that. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Hello. Hey guys, we're back, Hello. and now we're going to make the rice. If you're in a hurry and you work late, nowadays there's a lot of gadgets that you can use to make the rice a lot faster. I personally use this, where I'll open it, or I will use the, what Cubans call a casuela, which is a stainless steel pot. So you're gonna use our So now CJ is going to, I use jasmine rice you guys, jasmine rice is so fragrant and so delicious. You can use any, you know, white long grain rice that you like or even brown rice, whatever, whichever you prefer. And I like to use white jasmine rice which I have right here in my glass container right here. And we're going to go ahead and CJ is going to... CJ, you're going to get the water for me, so I'm going to get, remember when you're making rice, the ratio is the same, two cups of rice to two cups of water. So one cup, for my family, I already know it's two cups. Now CJ's going to hurry up and get me some water. We want to get two cups of water to put it in. Let me grab my other ingredients. 
my secret. <coughs> my first secret is vegetable oil. Or two, no, fill it all the way up, sweetheart. You have to fill it more. It has to go all the way up. Make sure it's even all the way up for a perfect batch of white rice. So he's pouring it in there. Hurry up, honey. Our viewers are waiting. Be careful. Pour one. Okay, and go grab another one. So it's two. So first secret is one heaping tablespoon of, my grandmother taught me this by the way, a heaping tablespoon of salt. Never ever fill your tablespoon over your rice pot. So let's see here. So let me grab, I'm going to pour this right here. We're going to get a heaping tablespoon. Can you see that? A heaping tablespoon of salt. Okay, CJ, drop it in. I normally don't measure. I normally will measure on the palm of my hand. And we are going to put two tablespoons of vegetable oil. So we're going to do one, two. Okay? So CJ, here you go, darling. Put that back, please. He's been such a great helper today. I love working. This is, once this is done, the rice will be done in 10 minutes. Once it's done, we'll come back. I will plate, CJ and I will plate. We will taste, and you don't want to miss this. This is such a hearty dish that you don't even need a side dish. You can make a salad on the side if you'd like, or I normally don't because it's a very hearty dish. You have everything. You have your meat, your potatoes, your rice, so... It's a very hearty dish, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. We will be back. This is awesome. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. This is going to make us want to do the cha-cha again. Yeah. So that's our little sample right there that we have with our two pieces of chicken. So let's taste test, CJ. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. There you go. So we are going to together grab a spoon with a piece of chicken. Look at this, you guys. Before we, we test it, look at this. Look how the chicken breast falls apart. Do you guys know why the chicken breast falls apart? I bet you, you guys do. Remember from my last videos, what does vinegar do? Tenderizes meat, like we did with our pork loin and the three bean chip. It's a plus. So let me get a piece of potato. Wait, let me make sure this potato doesn't fly off the plate. Potatoes are very hot when they come out, so be careful. We're gonna cut a small piece, CJ. Now we're going to cut a small piece of CJ and we are going to try it. I think we need a fork. Okay, that's perfect. So that's yours. Okay, so here, CJ, grab a piece of potato. Go ahead and grab a piece of potato. And grab a piece of meat. Right here, grab a piece of meat right there. There you go. Okay. So let's try it. Okay, guys, we're going to taste test it. You ready? Okay, try it early. Oh my god. Oh my god. What kind? Of, what? This does make me want to try chocolate. Oh my goodness, I can't stop. One more. Okay. Yep, food. We're gonna get full for dinner. You like this again? Oh my goodness, this is so good. Mm. The chop chop. I hope you enjoy this dish. Oh, excuse me, let me swallow. I will have this in the drop down menu, the recipe. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Not the like button, the like button, sorry. <laughs> and CJ, my helper here, he's a little shy, but he's good. And make sure you subscribe to our video and don't forget the bell. So that way it notifies you when we have other videos, which a lot there are a lot more to come. And we thank you for watching, and we'll have plenty more videos to come. Plenty more videos to come. See